Okay, I'm very, very happy to be here um, to present something. There's a big love symbol between WebKit and uh, WebRTC. So how many of you are actually using Safari or have used Safari? Quite a few, that, that's great. I will not ask you a question about using Safari and WebRTC. Why? Because, you know, there's some adoption to be made. Uh, WebRTC is a big, big family. It's doing like very crazy things and it's very powerful. Still, you need a map somehow to do things. Maybe at some point we will be able to simplify this, but for now, we need a map. So this presentation is just about that. Looking at what there is in WebKit, what is specific, um, and how, why there are these things there. So Safari, Mac, and iOS. So it's WebRTC 1.0 API only. There's no support for past versions. Uh, no support of stream-based APIs, for instance, callback-based APIs, options, legacy, all of that is not supported. It's not supported per se in Safari, but you can use adapter.js whenever you need to uh, have this level of compatibility with your existing code. Um, what we've seen with um, early adopters of WebRTC into Safari is that adapter.js there is doing a great job. But really, the, the, the the thing I would like to say is that track or transfer based API is the future. So if you can actually use this, that would be great. Um, the backend is based on LibreVTC, so it's the same backend as Google Chrome, which should ease a lot the adoption of Safari, uh, especially with uh, SFUs and so on. Now, um, one big thing. Yeah, H264, okay. You do not see VP8. Uh, it's true that VP8 is the default codec in the WebRTC industry, but I, I would say something, which is that um, in a few years from now, maybe VP8 will retire, and maybe there will be a need for a new codec. So obviously, now is the time to basically uh, try to support multi codecs into uh, solutions. It's good because then you can use both VP8 and H.264 where it's better because H.264 has some benefits in terms of efficiency for devices. It's, it's really good when you have hardware acceleration. Um, it has other benefits also. Uh, but anyway, if you want to build uh, a good future-proof solution, multi-codex might be one of the key features there. So if you're doing the work now, you will not have to do it later on. Now, talking about WebKit, so I'm a WebKit contributor, meaning I work on the WebKit framework, which is fueling Safari. But it, it's also fueling apps that just want to use uh, web technology, like HTML, JavaScript, and so on. So let's look at what's inside WebKit and is available to apps. Safari supports both RTCP per connection and media devices. So you can connect, you can exchange uh, media, and you can also grab uh, camera and microphone. For apps, peer connection is available, so it's great. If you're a game developer, please use it, that's great. Uh, if you want navigator media devices, sorry, it's not there. Um, if you look a little bit at past development cycles uh, with similar features that really need tight integration with the OS, that really need um, a good understanding of the security model of the API to expose all of this. Usually, those features get exposed, get used by privileged apps first, amongst them Safari, and later on, they get deployed to everybody. So we'll see what the future will give. Going back to Safari uh, and to WebKit, uh, Safari Browser is all about web technologies being efficient. Another very important thing is privacy. Uh, Safari and WebKit is caring a lot about privacy. Um, if you look at WebRTC, um, we saw that WebRTC, when deployed, uh, introduced some fingerprinting issues, like private uh, IP addresses are leaked, usually, um, for good reasons, but it's usually not needed. Uh, enumerating media devices is another fingerprinting um, thing. So by default, if you go to a page 
a website that you don't know or that you, that you know, there will be the idea is that within Safari, there will be no fingerprinting, at least within the WebRTC world, meaning that we will not leak your private IP addresses. We will not give your actual enumeration of devices either. Of course, it's good for apps to actually have that information at some point. So how, you, how do you get that? Basically, get to the media. When you get access to, the, to get to the media, the user actually did something there to say, hey, I want to share my face with uh, everybody. So the browser has it. The website has it. So in that case, maybe it's fine to actually enumerate all devices and to leak private IP addresses. This is what is done there. But um, yeah, that's it. So now, let's talk about media capture. I'll try to do a small demonstration because it's a bit boring, all of this. Um, so let's see if I'm able to do that. Yep. Uh -huh. It's a bit difficult. OK, so some of you may know this peer connection video only thing. Um, if you reload, you have a prompt. It's model, meaning that you cannot not see it. A user will not be uh, in any way able to, to, to not see it. You allow it, and then, ah, you have this. It's a Mac devices. You have this nice beep bop. Let's say that now you are in you, you are in another session and you want to do that. Again, the same prompt. What's happening there? Oh, you got it. But the other guy there does not have it anymore. So it's only one type at a time, which makes sense. Users will not be lost there. If you want to actually get it back, then users can, can actually do what, what they want there. You can also re-ask for get user media access. When the user will switch to the tab, you will get access again to, uh, to the tab. So that's about it there. So it means that your application needs actually to be sure to track these <coughs> unmute, ununmute events. They will happen for sure. So uh, go get them, do whatever is needed in terms of UI to acknowledge that and uh, have the best user experience there. Looking now at Video element. It's just recipes so that everybody can actually really use uh, Safari and, and WebKit uh, WebRTC implementation. WebKit has specific uh, things about video elements. Basically, autoplay is a thing that is allowed in certain circumstances, like if a video is muted. So if you actually want to have autoplay working, just use that, meaning you use the autoplay attribute you use the place in line attribute, which is really important on iPhones, because if you're not using it, then the video, when it will start playing, will go full screen, and it will stop the other, um, the other potential video elements. So it's very cheap, it's very easy to miss it, so use it. And if you mute it, then you're good. Video will autoplay for sure. Of course, muted video, maybe that's not, ah, I mean, audio is cool too. So if you're really adventurous, maybe you will, be, uh, you will want to actually play audio. So there, there are some specific rules. Auto-playing of audio will work if the page is already capturing, meaning you get, you gave, the user gave access to get to the media, to the camera, to the microphone, then the page will auto-play, no problem. If you're in a webinar case where you're actually only receiving things, videos, you're not sending anything, then get user media is not a thing there. You will need one user click to actually <coughs> enable the um, page to play audio. If you have like one stream, then a second stream, then a third stream, it will, it will be just one click, one at a time. Since we are all very good developers, we care about errors. Uh, Video.play is returning a promise. If you have not allowed error, it might mean that it's just uh, autoplay that is not working. And then you might want the user to take an action to click somewhere so that there's a video that play that will actually work. So we're there. Uh, in terms of adop adoption, it's basically that. Um, so let's look a little bit at testing, because we are serious developers. Um, I showed this slide three months ago, and I said, hey, you know, um, we have a feature that's really good. Now, 
we can, three months later, uh, I'm very happy to say that we have some new features that are available in Safari Tech Preview uh, or in WebKit Nightly. So if it's not in Safari Tech Preview now, it will be in a few weeks. WebDriver. So if you're using WebDriver, I'm sure you're all using WebDriver, then the browser will go into mode where it will use mock captures and there will be no prompt. Access will be granted. So the automation is very easy. You can also configure at the session time different things, like if you really want to use HTTP, uh, then you can do it. During the session, there's also an API that allows you to do what the user will do to grant access or deny access. This is important so that you actually test the flow where the user denies access. It's really, really important to do that. And another thing, if I'm able to show it, there. It may be a small thing, uh, but still, it's interesting. Um, you go to the inspector, and you can see now this web is logging and media logging. Usually, logging is through the console log in a, a Mac and iOS environment, which means that it's release logging, so we cannot release, we cannot log a lot of things. Now, with these things, you're in inspector mode, so you can actually decide to log media with debug. And if you go to console, then, yeah, you can see some things like, uh, maybe it's a bit difficult to understand, but uh, anyway, this is new information, and it's intertwined with your own web application's logs, which might be really cool. Uh, go check it, it's brand new, uh, we want your feedback. Going back. Okay. What's next? Um, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot, a lot. There's this. So we are back. We're back to the, to the, to the start. Um, I would say that web is very complex technology. That's true. A lot of things have to be done to make it work. Um, so maybe it's like that. But why is it so complex? Um, maybe it's because it's powerful. Not really. It's also because specs are still being defined. It's finalizing, so it's great that it's finalizing. It's also true that it's complex because there are a lot of uh, implementations and past implementations of browsers which have different behaviors, and we need to handle that. And it's true that Safari and WebKit implementing, as we see, various things uh, it's increasing again the complexity. So what's next for us is actually to continue the implementation and try to be um, as interoperable and as complete as an implementation can be. And we really hope also to engage with everybody to try to simplify as much as possible uh, the complexity there. So if we can get to a point where adapter.js is not needed, that would be great for everybody. Um, it might be in the future, but that's a, that's a target that we, we, should, we, that we are shooting for. Second thing is um, efficiency. Um, we want to add tools and features that will allow um, web applications to be more efficient. Uh, amongst them, of course, there might be things like codecs, scalability features, simulcasting, th these kind of things that are really, really important as, you, as we are going to uh, more than one-to-one -one, um, um, ex video exchange. So it might be in the schedule. But really, the main thing for what next might be you. We need your feedback. Bug.webkit.org is available for the public, so you can push feedback there. It will be visible to everybody. Bugreport.apple.com uh, is also a very nice place, um, especially for um, platform-specific requests. So um, let's talk, let's build the next version. It will be better, and it will be with you. Thank you. <laughs>